Well, I just got home today and I had some packages waiting for me from Australia. So this is the Bot War 2 Player Starter Set. Now this other one, those are some extra minis I ordered. Um, I'll probably show them off later on, but right now we're just looking at the big package right here, the two player starter set. So let me get the thing opened up and we can take a first look. Now I live in California and this baby was shipped all the way from Australia and it took 10 days to arrive. So it's pretty good travel time. Anyways, it will come to you in this box here. Of course we have our obligatory spin, so we have an Atlantean Air Warrior on that side, and then we have Angel the Valiant on that one. And then of course we get to the back. Um, all these pictures, they do not represent necessarily the minis that you will get in the box. These are just examples of miniatures that are available or have been available to the game. Let's get this thing open. All right. And here are these beautiful miniatures. They're sealed up as um, other miniatures are in these uh, plastic mylar type bags. Up on top, these are the two uh, exclusive miniatures if you happen to uh, pre-order the game. This one is a uh, broadsword. That's if you pre-ordered in the month of July. And this one is Chopper. This one was if you pre-ordered in June. So since I got in on the early pre-order, I got both of these exclusive miniatures. Now, both of them will be available later on. These are just um, exclusive sculpts. So um, Broadsword here, this exclusive, he's, uh, he's two-handing the sword. In the regular version, he's one-handing it, and he also has a... Uh, uh, energy pistol. Uh, I don't know what the regular version of Chopper here is going to look like, but this one he's double handing his axe. But if you didn't happen to pre order the two player, this is what you will get. So we have our pack of energy cubes and dice. And the dice are really cool. There is actually like in, they're actually indented with the paint in the indents. They're not like uh, printed on the surface like the early uh, Monster Apocalypse dice and some other games dice where if they just print the uh, symbols on the surface, they rub off like with two or three rolls of the dice. That's nice. Of course, we have our obligatory tape measure. So we do have it in inches and uh, I guess uh, centimeters, millimeters. I, I'm not up on that measure, that unit of measurement. They do have that. Of course, everyone wants to know about the miniatures. So we have our Valiant starter set, and this one has five Valiants. And we have our Atlantican set, and this one has six miniatures. So this one will have two Air Warriors four mud warriors and this pack will have our five valiants of general duke uh, wolf angel top star and aegis and of course they come with bases and these miniatures are partially pre-assembled in that the legs are already attached to the bodies which is really really nice for metal miniatures because it's less parts you have to clean up, it's less parts you have to glue. You don't have to worry about pinning or anything that you might have to worry about with some metal miniatures. So you can get straight to putting the arms and the heads on, and then you're good to go. And lastly, of course, we have our color stat cards, which we'll take a closer look at in just a sec. And then we have our printed full color second edition rule book, which we'll take a quick flip through. Let's go ahead and get a closer look at all the goodies we have. And for those of you who have been lucky enough to pre-order early, then you already know what is in these exclusives and you'll see them up close. But just for the sake of completeness and what the heck, let's go ahead and show off 
these uh, pre-order exclusives. We've got our base for uh, Chopper here. We got two nice chunky legs at her body. One arm, the other arm holding the axe, and actually two arms holding the axe. This is an arm without the hand attached. Two arms, and then we got our head. So, let's see if we can get a nice close up of our head here. There we go. This is the head of the first trasher chopper, the leader of the trashers. There's him. And then, of course, since this is a metal miniature, there is a lot of flash that has to be cleaned up. So, you know, if you're an experienced modeler, that is nothing new. If you are not familiar with metal miniatures, then this will be a learning experience. But, you know, it's nothing bad. It just takes a little bit of hobby know-how and you are all good to go. So, I do recommend that you use super glue with this. Don't be like me and try and use Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue does work, but it takes a lot longer to actually cure. So do yourself a favor, get yourself some super glue. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. Moving on to Broadsword. A broadsword is one of those nice models that the legs already come pre-attached. So it is as simple as just attaching his arms and his head, and he is good to go. So here we have his two arms, and we have his head, and we have his broadsword, his namesake. Let's see if we can take a close look. Here is his head, and looks like it has a uh, combat visor that can go up and down to protect his eyes when he's engaged in battle. And from what I understand, Broadsword is a model that does specialize in close combat and he is cheaper than some other, cheaper to field than some of the other uh, close range combatants in the Valiant's faction. If I had said that he was from a different faction before, I do apologize. But he does have ranged capabilities as well. So if you need a lower cost uh, melee combatant for your Valiant army, he is definitely one to go ahead and pick up. And as I said, this is the exclusive pose. The non-exclusive pose that should be appearing in the web store quite soon. He is holding the sword up here in one hand, and then the other arm over here is holding a blaster pistol. Let's move on to the non-exclusive parts of the two-player starter set. Looking at the stat cards. So we'll get these unwrapped. And here are all of our stat cards. Aegis, Aegon, Topstar, Moray, Angel, Stingray, Nami, Nebulous, Wolf, Thermal, and the leader, General Duke. So, taking a look, we just have our faction symbol. We have the name of the character, how many points it costs to field them. We have our character portrait. And we have all of our stats here. We have our damage meter. Him being a leader and an important character. His goes all the way up to 10. Here is uh, his energy cube generation. And then we have his uh, special abilities, which is Ram Attack, Inspiring Presence, and Pure of Purpose. And each of these characters all has, you know, energy generation and their own special abilities. Each and every single one. There is not a single one that doesn't have something important on it. And they can all be used from different effects on the field of battle. Now, these cards are available for uh, free to download on the Trader's Galaxy website. These are just the printed versions. So, if you wanted to try out the game um, before you commit to buying a full-sized two-player starter box, 
you can get the stack cards and the uh, rule book is available for purchase digitally as a download it, the cost is pretty cheap I would say that in American dollars it would probably be something like seven bucks but of course if you get the two-player starter box you get the printed rule book and it's gonna be rather difficult to show it right now so let's move some stuff out of the way and we'll take a quick flip through so here we have our introduction this is, explains a bit of the backstory of the bots where they came from their purpose what happened on earth we have some uh, hobbying section stuff about playing the game we have the anatomy of the stat card then we have all of our all phases to play the game moving range attacks close attacks stuff like train and cover boosting attacks all the super abilities that the characters have and you know it goes on and on and here's different classifications for models there are infantry so if you are using a faction such as the democracy democracy makes great use of these uh, infantry sections they're not the only one that has infantry but they do make use of infantry infantry are not really powerful on their own but they can pack a punch if you group them up together and they're typically what are known as battery units and i showed you on the stat cards here each model has an energy generation but every time they move every time they attack every time they do something it costs energy points to do so it can get expensive to do stuff with your models which is why resource management is so important but models such as infantry are known as battery units basically you can put them on the field you pay their cost to field them and then they kind of sit in the back they sit behind cover and they generate energy that other units can use so you can attack with them but they're much more useful as battery units they support your other units of course we have more special rules and yeah it goes on and on and there are more stuff in here here's a, a chart for who can ally with whom and then we get to our scenarios so we have quest for energy we have the ruby crystals control of the space portal assassinate we have protect the cargo escalation one shall stand control the city rescue the civilians and doomsday device and of course then we get to a bit more fiction nice picture here and then we have our tokens now tokens are for if you don't have dice so you can use these things in case you just bought the rule book but you don't have the dice you can simply use these and i guess this is a picture of some products that are available uh nice vignette here and that is all that there is in the rule book it's nice, it's simple, it's to the point, it's solid, it's good. Now let's move on to the miniatures, what everyone wants to see. We'll start with the bad guy faction, the Atlanticans. Now our two air warriors have these larger bases. I guess those are 60 millimeter bases while our mud warriors have these 50 millimeter bases. I'll have to read through the rule book to see how important base size is. I think it's, it's just, that's the model that can fit on it. There might be some enhanced rules later on, but as of now, so far as I know, they're, 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 they're just two base the models on. So we have our two air warrior bodies. I am not 100% sure on their names, but as, uh, as you can see, they do have the legs attached. As I've said before, these are really nice with the legs attached. You don't have to pin them. It's fantastic. We have a mud warrior body. 
another mud warrior. We have our third mud warrior. And our fourth one, of course. And it looks like the arms and matching heads are molded onto uh, Roan sprues, so it would be pretty difficult to mess up who gets what. And we have an arm, a head, and a shield, two arms, and a head. We have two arms with two close combat weapons. We have a head with two arms holding energy pistols. We have a head with an arm and it's holding a, uh, I think that's called like a magnetic disruption gun, which is one of the reasons why the Atlantican faction is as powerful as it is. The magnetic disruption gun is really strong, which makes these mud warriors who are cheaper uh, units to use really powerful. So uh, here's another magnetic, magnetic disruption gun. Here we have arms, head for the mud warriors. In any case, so here is the complete faction. I wish I could have footage of them put together, but I, as you can see, I just literally opened this thing up. Let's take a look at the Valiants. Are the definitive heroes of the bot war game. So if you're the kind of person that likes to play the penultimate good guys, penultimate good guys, then this is the faction for you. So we have the big 60 millimeter base. This is for General Duke. Here's his big body right there. And we have, uh, let's just call it a medium base for simplicity. This one belongs to Wolf. He'll need to have uh, his feet clean before he can stand up properly, but this one's for Wolf. We have our three small bases for Aegis, Top Star, and Angel. So, from what I understand, Aegis here is supposed to be the smallest, or just one of the smallest, uh, Valiant uh, characters so far in the game. He is the head of Valiant's security. And he has this kind of short guy complex. Here's the body for Top Star. He uh, dual wields pistols. And then we have Angel, who is a sharpshooter. And does not want to stand up right now. And here's the big chunky arms for Duke, along with his head. He has a combat visor that is in the down position if you go ahead and get the uh, the War Duke, which instead of having a gun will have a shield and a sword. This is the one for Top Star because it has the dual pistols. Uh, let's see, what have we got here? This is the arms and the gun for Aegis. This is the sprue for the arms and head of Angel. So she has her energy gun crossbow right there. Along with a lot of flash. And we have our sprue of arms and head for Wolf. One of those arms broke free, but as it is metal, it's a-okay. And just to show a close-up of the two heads that Duke comes with. Alright, we have... One where the visor is in an up position, so you can see all of the detail on his face. Which, of course, is difficult with his camera and the shadows and everything, but trust me, it's all there. And then we have the War Duke head where the visor is down and it is in totally a battle position. So I'm going to look forward to getting this miniature and the rest of these together. They're going to look excellent on the table, especially when they finally get painted up. This is all that I have for the Bot War 2 player starter set review. I think that this is an excellent value. From what I understand, the Australian dollar, which the website lists all of its prices on, 
is at an all-time low, so now is never a better time to get into Bot War because really the two-player starter will cost you just a little under a hundred bucks, and it is a fantastic game with a lot of really great original minis. Fantastic story. I recommend that if you're into uh, futuristic robot fighting action miniature games, uh, eight millimeter war games, this is definitely one to get in on. That's all I have for this review. Go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell button if you want to, check back again for future videos, and as always, I am signing out.